This is Tracy Broussard with RoadDogOnline.com and the legendary Roy Burns with Aquarian Drumheads. What started it out for me, I was taking drum lessons in Kansas City. I used to take a four and a half hour train ride in each direction to take a lesson. It was either that or no lessons. Okay. Louis Belson heard me play at a studio there and said, Kid, you're as good as you're going to get if you stay in Kansas. Go to New York, L.A. and study. So two years later, I got on a train, went to New York, took four and a half days, and uh, started taking a few lessons, working a few gigs. And a couple of years later, I was with Benny Goodman's band, and I started doing studio work. Then I wrote some drum books that got me in the clinic field. Then I went to work for Rogers Drums, doing clinics all over the world. In 1980, we started acquiring accessories. 89, we started with drum heads, and the rest, as they say, is history. What got you into making the drum heads? Well, we started out with the cymbal spring, which was our first product. And we had the graphite sticks and a few other little things. And uh, I kept getting uh, requests from friends of mine who were drummers saying, you know, the biggest problem I have is tuning. Why mm -hmm. do I have so much trouble tuning my drums? Mm -hmm. And not to cast aspersions on any other companies or anything, but we felt that uh, there were some problems that had never been addressed with drum heads. And what we did was take a calf drum head mm -hmm. and copy the dimensions. So the first thing we noticed is that the collar, there's no preformed collar. So we made it round, so it would mm -hmm. be like a calf head. Oh, okay. So the bearing edge forms the collar, mm -hmm. the bearing edge of the drum, so it's a custom fit. The next thing that we did was uh, the safety lock hoop, which will not allow any slippage. Because calf heads wouldn't slip, they would break, but they wouldn't slip. So that solved 90% of the guy's tuning problems. The head is level to start with, the curve will adjust to the bearing edge, and the hoop holds it, and so you're not getting out a drum key between tunes. Mm, okay. That was really our ba the basis for what we started with. Now, the, some of your friends that approached you early on about the heads, what was their reaction when they finally got your first couple lines of product? Well, the first time around, I think we made 11,000 heads in our first run, and we ruined about 9,000 of them. <laughs> but that was the first learning experience. It's not going to be so easy. But then uh, we kept at it, and uh, I, I was at a show at the Guitar Center. It was a benefit for a drummer who was ill, and I had a knife stuck through the center of the snare drum head. And Vinny Appersee came over and said, is this for real? I said, you can play on it, it won't detune. And he said, I gotta have this. And he was our first endorser. What, when was that? Well, let's see, that's gotta be uh, around 1990. Oh, okay. Right. About a year or two into the heads. And that was our first uh, kind of breakthrough. And then we came up with the super kick bass drum head, which put us on the map. Right. That was our hit product. And then it's just gone from one to the next. And <clears throat> what we've tried to do is stay in touch with the uh, guys that are playing, guys like yourself. Mm -hmm who are on the road, as you notice. Right. When we've tested heads, we've asked you to try them out under yes. real conditions, mm -hmm. so that we're not getting off in a room, an ivory tower, so to speak. And here it is, and then say, well, that isn't what we want. Right. You can't lose that contact with the drummer. See, I have a certain philosophy, and that is, I started playing drums when I was six or seven years old. I'm retired from active playing now, but uh, <clears throat> I played for many years. And the thing I realize is if there's not that young guy that wants to play drums, there's no drum business. Right. The big corporations tend to overlook that. They're into marketing plans and uh, clever names, and we'll just advertise it to guys that like it. I think our focus is on that drummer, that young guy that wants to play the drums. If we keep him in mind as the most important person to Aquarian, we can't go too far wrong. That's true. And uh, the fact that you are testing the products before you're putting them out. Oh, yeah, I mean, we, it we has take a year or so. What took us about a year on the high velocity head? I love that head, by the way. Oh, good. I well, love that head. You were head. very important in it. Well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for thinking about well, it. Well, <clears throat> a guy called me today and said uh, that's the most versatile head that he's played for a snare drum. Yes. You can use it, in, you can tune it high or low, play brushes or sticks on it, heavy or soft. And uh, that was what we were trying to achieve. Sometimes you get lucky and it works mm -hmm. right, and sometimes it, you have to go back to the drawing board. How have you seen Aquarian expand since you guys started out? Well, first of all, uh, people thought we couldn't make it. 
and we were convinced that we could, so we just had the old perseverance ethic. And uh, once the bass drum heads hit, then it was one, hit like a domino, one after another. Then they discovered our snare drum heads, and uh, the Studio X was a big hit. And then the Super 2s, um, the Tom Tom head with uh, two different uh, thicknesses, a 7 mil and a 5 mil. So uh, I think it's just one thing after another, and word of mouth. Again, it goes back to the drummers. You can run all the ads in the world you want to, but if the guy plays the head and says, this isn't working, you take it off. Mm -hmm. You know, the trial by fire is the product. It's nice to have a good philosophy. It's nice to be nice to the drummers. It's nice to have money to run ads. But in the final analysis, the product has to stand on its own. That's true. And, and there's no getting around that. You know? And I think we always addressed that. We knew we were the little guys or the new guys on the block, so uh, we couldn't outspend anybody. So we had to outthink them. There you go. Which was our best shot, you know, and it's worked out pretty well. <laughs>